No, no, this is a period piece set in 1962 and follows Catrian, a Dutch woman that marries Sergio, an Italian guy, and they move to his tiny town in the north of Italy. They obviously struggle to fit in, and even more as they have decided to not baptize their child, Dante. As Sergio looks for a job, he bumps into the local priest, who promises employment in exchange for the kids being part of the community. The scene that I've chosen is the moment where Sergio finally admits that he has organized a baptism behind his wife's back as he cannot take it anymore. Deciding where to put the clothesline was really important and with the production designer we worked it out uh, following two rules. We needed to be able to have the blocking as close as possible to one of the walls to use the wall itself as negative fill to have more contrast, creating the blocking in a way where we would have certain elements in the backdrop to be able to pop in period accurate props that solve the period even more. The director set this scene in a wonderfully mundane moment where Catherine is just folding the dry laundry from outside and asks Sergio for help. They are connected, but even while holding the same white sheet, they are in two completely different mindsets. The long uninterrupted shot builds on the tension that is in between the two characters. And it's a technique that I do like to use as a centerpiece of short films to counterpoint the main incident or the main conflict of the story. And in the same way, we used it in another short film called Salma, but instead of being the climax of Act 2, it was the ending of Act 1. Moving to British realism, Salma is a story inspired by the tragedy of Grenfell and is told from the point of view of a teenager. In this case, the long shot is at the end of Act 1 and we decided to open it with a match cut from the energy of going out with your friends uh, to counterpoint it even more with the ending and the realization that her building is on fire. The script itself was set uh, over a span of four to six months, uh, but we shot everything in the, in the same week of November. Uh, that meant that we had to scout uh, a street that had evergreen trees so we could sell the idea that the girls in the light as uh, summer clothes uh, were not actually freezing to death. Once we found the right spot that also made sense in terms of geography, then we started working on the blocking and how the camera would find their faces at the end. It was a relatively large space. They walk roughly 25 meters, and obviously on a short film budget is quite difficult to light such a large space. Originally we were supposed to have access to a balcony on the building to their left, but we lost it on the day, so my wonderful gaffer managed to find a way of rigging a light on top of the lamppost that was right there. This obviously limited us in terms of framing. Uh, we recreated the fire effect uh, at the end of the uh, of the road with um, a bunch of lights on flicker boxes and uh, I wish we had a bit more budget to get permission to use a large smoke machine outside. But sadly most of our budget went on having the actual uh, police cars running in the background. Uh, also the the light that we have going on their faces once the camera is in front of them uh, couldn't be the police cars anymore because they would have cast the camera shadow so we had a spark with a battery powered light just passing over the head of the of the setting up operator so we could have the effect without having the shadow and also uh, some of the lights that we see in the background and on the side were our own practicals that we inserted in the shot to get uh, more depth and uh, more pockets of lights probably my favorite shot of this film and the previous film. Well, thank you so much.